Welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are about to play our Mandate of Heaven campaign. So this is going to be a campaign where we're playing as Japan, but in contrast to the games that we've played before, where we've tried to like liberalize Japan and combat the shogunate um, via politics, in this case, we are going to, instead of doing that, we're going to go ahead and just go straight down to line infantry, get guns for our, our troops, and uh, concentrate them all in Kansai. Yeah, and because all of all of it's going to be in Kansai, we're going to be able to overthrow the the shogunate with military force. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of our, our still our, our normal sorts of politics stuff. We're gonna like bolster the strength of the intelligentsia, for instance, by just giving them more money. Um, but we are we are gonna fight them. So one of the things that we're going to do in this game that's going to be a little different is rather than going all the way into multiculturalism, we are going to stay on racial segregation all game. Uh, once we get there, because what our goal is, it's not to westernize Japan in this case. We're trying to easternize Japan. Rather than following the model um, created by Great Britain during the 19th century, um, Oshio is going to try to follow the model created by the Manchus in the 17th century. And instead of trying to go out into the world to find Japan's destiny, Japan is going to go straight into China. And so we're going to try to kind of follow the the path created by um, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. And instead of, uh, but instead of failing to conquer Japan, our goal, of course, is to take all of this. But it's not to just take all of it. It's to core all of it. So we're going to we're gonna do that. Um, we'll see if my computer can let us get all the way to, uh, to you know, World Conquest on 1.1.1. On it, it does still have some issues in regards to performance. Um, so that's, you know, that's something that we're going to we're going to play around. Shogun intervenes in the political process. All right. We will we will take it if uh, if the Shogun wants to make his will be known. I'm not going to say no. So I'm going to carry just a little bit of authority here um, to try to maximize our enactment time bonus because I do want to get I do want to get some of these things done um, and on the books because I don't want to be spending forever. We, we, we do have a little while. We have about five years to get where we need to go. Oh, it looks like China backed down. All right. Well, that's that's scary for you, China. But yeah, China has now backed down to, to Great Britain and therefore lost the opium wars, has widespread opium addiction. Man, if if we were if we were ready to invade them right now, this would be this would be a heck of a time. But we're not not just yet, not just yet. Ooh, all right, we got racial segregation. So now we can go ahead and uh, create a new government because we're gonna want to create a government that's gonna be pro um, professional military. Actually, yeah. So we can we can go back to our our starting situ setup with uh, Shogun and Samurai, and then we can go ahead and just uh, start working on our professional army. And the nice thing is that if we can get professional army done, then this massive serfdom abolished movement that we have uh, is going to... All right, sweet. We're on to line infantry. This massive serfdom abolished movement that we have right here is going to make it really easy for us to um, get the shogunate mad enough to revolt. But we've uh, we've now successfully gotten to the point where we're at surf we're, we're going to do serfdom abolished as soon as our line infantry are ready. So we're going to set up a uh, Kansai so that we can build some can some guns here. Um, on that note, we are going to add some tool industry to the uh, the logging camps. So that way it creates demand for the tooling workshop back home. And of course, now that we have the professional army gone, um, we are going to go ahead and fire everybody in the military outside of uh, Kansai. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create a reasonable number of, of rebels, but it's it's being done for a good reason. Oh no, the serfdom abolished movement uh, disbanded. That's annoying. Enact landed voting is the movement now. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. No, we're not going to become a protectorate of Brazil. you got to be kidding me. Right now, all we're waiting for is for our uh, our guns. Once we have our guns in place, we should be able to very easily put down any shogunate resistance. All right, so we got line infantry unlocked. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep moving down to Napoleonic Warfare just because we want to be able to maximize our, our troops here. Um, but what we're going to do, now that we have... Um, these these guns online we're going to switch everybody over to using guns and cannons uh and that's going to of course make it so that when these arms industries get finished there's an extant demand um and it's also going to make it so that whenever we fight our civil war um we're going to be able to have the the a huge military advantage because we'll have the we'll have the production of of weapons and they won't this little landed voting movement over here is going to be might be useful um Aristocrats are dangerous to be empowering too much, but 
clergymen are going we're going to have a lot of clergymen pretty soon so we may end up moving into landed voting once we have a, a large enough economy to support a lot of uh government administration buildings and um a lot of universities because those will keep with uh with these religious production technologies all game same with the urban centers we're just gonna keep all of these guys on on religious stuff all game uh, just to maximize the the number of pops um Maximize the amount of ownership in the hands of clergymen. All right, we developed mobile artillery, so we might as well use them. Uh, mobile mobile artil artillery is a heck of a thing. So we're going to pick up uh, academia, and then we're going to take colonization, because nobody's taken Hokkaido yet, so hopefully we can still get it. I would I would very much like to, to have that under a thumb if we can, but I, I still think that getting um, getting academia online is a little more important. It's it's very very good to get your technology online, and we just we needed weapons. We did need weapons. We needed our military tech so that we could break the strength of our shogunate. You know what? We uh, we've we've been in government long enough. It's time to start a civil a civil war. Let's see what we can get. Yep, there it is. Preserve monarchy. This should be an easy war for us. All right, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna order everybody except for Kansai to go back to using um, irregular infantry. And now, whenever they revolt, they should have um, a, a penalty because they've changed their military tech so recently. Um, so it'll it'll be a little easier for us to put them down. All right, so they've started the Diplo play. Mobilize all generals, activate all conscripts. I think we're going to use our defensive strategist up here. Japanese aristocratic revolt just back down. You can't win. I promise you can't win. All right, the aristocratic revolt has broken out. It looks as though they are focusing on attacking Hokkaido, um, which is fine by me because it means that we get to advance through most of the rest of Japan entirely unopposed. All right. Yeah, that's that's okay with me. This represents the daimyo rising up in rebellion against um, Oshio's attempts to, to coup the rest of the country, but it's it's just they don't have any strength. They've, they've got nothing. They've got nothing. Are you gonna hold on, aristocratic revolt? You do. You do have technically part of the country, not a big part of the country, but you do technically have part of the country. 1842 crushed the aristocrats. We'll go up to max taxes. Not happy to do that. Capitulation. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Give me a theocracy. Ah, uh, religious pogroms. Ah, uh, nah. This is not the Mahayana way. We're we're gonna we're gonna add some enactment time, unfortunately. But we are we are still technically operating at a at a positive. It's not a big positive, but it is a positive. This is this is the this is gonna be the cool one, right? We're gonna we're gonna oust the the shogun in one war, hopefully. Well, they're starting another revolt. Um, it seems like there should probably be a cooldown on how frequently the uh, re these revolutions can occur. Um, but that's all right. We'll. We'll, we'll deal with them whenever we're ready, whenever they're ready. All right, so the Preserve Monarchy movement has has now looped the uh, the samurai in. So we're going to have to fight another another revolution here, but it's going to be against a bigger group. Another Japanese aristocratic revolt is upon us. If we can just get um, theocracy on the books and get the, the Tokugawa ruler off, um, then we'll be able to, to have a lot more legitimacy with whichever party uh, gets brought in. I think personally it should be the devout, but that's, you know, that's a, a gameplay thing. We'll see. Fighting the second civil war here against the, the shogunate. Can they, can they put up a better resistance this time? Nope. We, we have the guns. We have the guns. They do not have the guns. When you have the guns and your opponents do not have the guns, it's it's pretty easy to to make some real progress against them, even if they have a lot of a lot of people on their side. Ooh, all right, good. We got uh, grassroots support. So in April 1845, we might have it. We might we might have to declare bankruptcy. That that is something that may end up happening. But if we can if we can just weaken the the shogunate enough, um, then it might be worth it to to do a little bit of a little bit of bankruptcy for us. The real damage here is going to be economic more than anything else. We might need to just pause. Yeah, we have to pause construction. Here we go. We annex them yet again. Buddhist monks are up to 60%. They Well, they have won two civil wars. Once you've won two civil wars, then it's going to be a little harder for your opponents to put together the resources to resist you. 
another another preserve monarchy revolution you guys are killing me with this if we can just get an acting theocracy through then we can then we can start working on something else that's going to make those interest groups happy uh yeah they'll be happy with dedicated police force if we can just get theocracy through then we can get dedicated police force and everybody will love that ah we got establish a university all right yeah we're not going to have a lot of university th universities for throughput so we're just going to take um I guess we'll take empiricism. It doesn't really matter. All right, we got a new theocracy. Um, so it's going to change our government around. So we got a, a new jingoist leader. And um, I guess Oisho, Oshio has decided that he'll just stay, take a step back um, and no longer participate in the normal sort of politic. Uh, but now we have Uehara Tsukiyuki, who is the, the new high priest in charge of Japan. Uh, and the Buddhist monks, of course, they now have this um, Admiral Ichinoe uh, Taro. And so this, this little cadre is, has now created a theocracy. We'll see what else we can get up to. Yeah, we can get both of them, actually. Cool. So with peasants and intelligentsia in government, now we can go ahead and switch into a dedicated police force, which is going to make a lot of people really happy. Yeah, look at that. Restore monarchy is gonna is gonna fall apart. Your revolutionary your revolutionary group is done. We now have Japan on the map. Uh, it it is gonna kill. I I think it's going to kill the honorable restoration. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but whether it, just, it breaks the the chain or not is irrelevant because the, it, it's about it's about claiming the mandate of heaven in in uh, China. That's our goal. That's our goal for this episode for this uh, campaign. After dedicated police force, we can go into probably appointed bureaucrats. I want to go into elected bureaucrats, but we can't do elected bureaucrats until we have a method of, of doing voting. And I'm not doing that until we, we've we um, built our economy up enough that we can start building lots of... Uh, it's going to get a lot of clergy. Yeah, now we can now we can begin our economic development in earnest. Because now we're, we're kind of... We've broken through the revolutionary uh, resistance of the shogunate. I don't think they're ever going to be able to, to overthrow us again. I think this is it for the, for you. Oh, we're going to get enact serfdom abolished as a movement? Sure. After the moment we're done with dedicated police force, we will absolutely do that. Hey, dedicated police force. Awesome. Well, you know what? The people want serfdom abolished, so we're going to give it to them. Come at me, Shogunate. Come at me. I think I think we've broken them. I think the the two successive civil wars was enough. It did... It did cripple or it hurt our, our economic development by quite a lot right we we had some serious downturns there um but i think with the the power of the buddhist monks growing and growing i think we'll be able to get where we need to because we have a uh we have a, a dictator here oh my god do we have a dictator here we're gonna want to pick up central archives soon because that's going to dramatically increase our ability to have um tons of bureaucracy which is something that we're going to have issues with once we switch over to uh, to appointed bureaucrats. Hey, serfdom abolished. Sweet. I dare you to fight us uh, over appointed bureaucrats. But appointed bureaucrats is going to be really helpful for us. Uh, in case you don't know how to, to evaluate hereditary bureaucrats, it's just bad. Even the bureaucracy population cost multiplier isn't enough because this is not only adds a 25% a strength bonus to the shogunate, who we are trying to remove all of the political power from. Look at that. Oh my god, it's 1846, and we are working on the very last law to, to remove power from the shogunate. And it's the it's the one that I used to think was... I mean, I think it, it is still very good, um, but I think because of the nature of the 1.1.1 legitimacy system, I think... I think now the way you have to deal with landowners is with guns. I think that the rebalancing has made it so that it's kind of not worth it to, to try to uh, remove them air quotes peacefully. They're just they're just too much. They're just too much. I think you see what we're doing here. The the goal is going to be to make um, Japan very very strong without relying on the things that people usually rely on. We could take an enactment success chance there. I, it in general enactment success is just very very strong. Eventually, I think our government is probably going to look like Buddhist monks plus petite bourgeoisie. Um, but that's for whenever we're actually ready for those parties to have power 93 percent of our clout is in government right now after winning those wars the only people who have any political power are buddhist monks peasants and intelligentsia at the moment awesome all right we got appointed bureaucrats there it is so now it's it's 
1847 in our laws we've got theocracy on the books we've got professional army appointed bureaucrats freedom of conscience um we still need to get into agrarianism which is going to require us to invent romanticism oh man we haven't picked up romanticism yet 17 months to to learn um, alternatively, of course, we could just go straight into something else like interventionism or laissez-faire. But in order to get into either of those, we'd need corn laws, and I'm not, I'm not bringing the shogunate back. They're never, they're never coming back to power. Not, well, not on my watch. Uh, so I guess we will need to pick up romanticism because we haven't, we haven't gotten the text spread on it yet. And then we'll go back for uh, mechanical tools. All right, so that's the uh, that's the first episode of Mandate of Heaven. So the Buddhist monks have successfully seized control of Japan, and after two, a couple of civil wars actually have um, have completely overthrown the shogunate, and now have instituted sort of a religious dictatorship to to govern the country while uh, the Emperor Komei finishes receiving his honorable restoration we'll see what happens when this takes all the way through because i think what what we want to do actually is keep um keep the shogunate or keep the the buddhist monks in charge if we can do that all game um i would be absolutely ecstatic but we'll we'll see what we have to do in order to make that happen but we do want to get the buddhist monks as happy as possible too so we're going to need to add um a health system we're going to need to add a school system and we just uh dramatically changed the nature of our bureaucracy so we're going to need to massively expand our bureaucracy too so look forward to a massively expanded bureaucracy here on the next episode of uh of mandate of heaven here on we play games all right that's walker take care